Hi all, and thank you very much for the opportunity to present Monash Innovation Labs today. Uh, so this project is at Monash Uni's Clayton campus on the traditional lands of the Bunurong people of the Kulin Nation, and I'd like to pay my respects to elders past and present. Uh, we, uh, our initial involvement on this project was to produce a prospectus document which was used to advocate for funding, and shortly thereafter the project became a reality. We began with a precinct plan, developing the precinct in line with Monash Master Plan. We looked not only at how the students might approach the facility, but also from the point of view of industry coming on campus. We factored in the existing and potential pedestrian networks, um, such as the future suburban rail loop to the north. And we also had to address the numerous uh, entrances into the precinct, which provided no perceivable uh, identity or hierarchy to the, to the precinct. Our design consolidated the entries, uh, rationalising the buildings into a single hub. We also saw ways to connect to the green space, improving amenity and creating opportunities for outdoor activity. Uh, that led to this early conceptual image. Uh, so new prominent entries along College Walk to the south and Alliance Lane to the north, and new secondary entries at the corners, and a new extension into the central courtyard. We established early on in the project uh, a set of design principles which would help inform design decisions, uh, such as technology and research on show, student and research engagement, we needed to make sure it was an exciting and engaging space and a hub identity we needed to uh, unify two distinct 1990s Bates Mark McCutcheon buildings into a single building. Uh, we were fortunate enough to be involved in a couple of other projects within the precinct uh, a little early on. So this is the generator, uh, which is an incubator for startups and a Monash maker space, a real draw card for industry because it's uh, where they the students can showcase what, what they can do. Uh, so the brief, um, we started with the Faculty of Engineering's accommodation schedule. Um, on the left is a diagram of that, on the right is shown in the red lines the area that we had to play with, so you can see from the start even if we were super efficient with space that didn't quite fit. Um, so we challenged the brief uh, and proposed a much more engaging and collaborative environment um, rather than the single cell spaces which effectively would have replicated the existing building. So here are the proposed plans, on the left is ground, on the right is first. Um, Uplink is, was the first stage and it's the north-south running spine. Um, at the southern corner of that is a student lounge. There is no better way to activate space on campus than a student lounge. They will colonise the space before you even reach practical completion. Um, and it can also be used for industry and events uh, outside student hours. More centrally, uh, there is a student collaboration space and presentation area, direct links to the Monash Maker space and direct links to the internal courtyard. And that collaboration space is next to the digital twin lab, which is a test bed, a bit of a, um, a fishbowl and a test bed for industry to design to manufacture. Along the north, uh, running east west, is the CoLab, a mix of workshops supported by collaborative and work, uh, work um, and uh, sorry, collaborative and breakout spaces. Um, and on the first floor uh, to the south is the administrative centre of the hub. Um, along the spine are the industry workspaces uh, with a range of settings from individual companies to more co-working type spaces and a, solid, um, a central collaboration area and several meeting rooms. Uh, along The collab along to the north um, similar to ground floor, lar largely workshop and lab spaces, but also a central collaboration space in the middle. So there she was, um, building 60 in the front, building 69 to the rear. Oops. Um, the building gets a mention in Philip Goad's uh, Bates Smart 150 Years of Australian Architecture. Um, you can see that original umbrella roof and the yellow stair, they did um, at the time signify an entrance into the precinct, but they also provided quite a, quite a blocker. Um, so in our proposed design, uh, we propose to remove that. Um, 
a new parasitic sort of intervention um, with a contrasting yet complementary um, building fabric. So that addition, it's an upstairs boardroom. Uh, it's clad in a sawtooth profile perforated aluminium to distinguish it from it. And there she is today. Uh, as you enter, you can really appreciate how the space has transformed. That's what it was. Um, it was effectively a, an external breezeway connecting to distinct buildings. As you progress further north, um, again, you can see the link to the courtyard to the left, uh, but it's not all that inviting. Uh, and another safety yellow stair, which ironically is meant to connect, but again, provides a barrier. Uh, and that was our design proposal to remove it. And there she is today. Um, so central collaboration zone to the left, you can get the glimpse of connecting to the building next door. I'd better speed up. Uh, upstairs, again, you get this um, sense of the existing steel structure, not just retained, but celebrated. You almost want to climb these columns or hug them. Uh, the meeting spaces and collaboration areas. Uh, I love this image because it's sort of the glimpse between um, the two buildings. You can get the original steel stair, uh, steel structure of this building and you get the glimpse of the concrete frame of the building next door. So we removed part of the southern facade of the adjacent building. Uh, the, the warmth of the uplink starts to bleed in and really complements the existing concrete structure beautifully. As we move upstairs, a similar image. Um, we used um, a language of perforated aluminium throughout, internally and externally. Um, again to distinguish new from old, but the, the choice of the material was in terms of linking industry and manufacture to the, uh, to the precinct. Um, the existing structure and the perf complement each other beautifully. Um, the perf also allowed us to, um, we had to fill this space with considerable amount of services and infrastructure. Um, and we wanted to partly put that on show, but also, you know, we could have filled it with plasterboard bulkheads, but the perf allowed us to, um, to maintain these glimpses of the existing structure through the Perth. Here we go into the collab space. You see the colour uh, creep into what's typically just white clinical lab spaces. Uh, and again, in this building, retaining and celebrating the existing structure so you constantly get this rhythm of new and old with the beautiful old concrete <coughs> columns within. Uh, and we use the perf not just internally but externally. Um, just have to <laughs> Final statements. Um, I'll just run through a couple of images. Um, the perf signifying the new entrances into uh, into the building and our extension to the courtyard. Thank you.